Fame Farm fans. Well, this is a slight wild sight. We're going for a corn adventure. I'm hauling grain for the landowner here, not the combine driver. Uh, so we're watching a 1660. I have very little experience with international combines. It's red. I know it's Cummins powered. Um, it makes noise. It takes the grain off, puts it in the tank, and dumps it in my truck. It's like they try to time the knives on the rollers so, you know, they're timed with each other and not, um, you know, they're not meshing together. Well, this could be interesting. See, I guess these have a starter for the reverser. I'm waiting for the reverser to go, or maybe not. I have no experience to know what's going on with these. So, uh, we'll hope it looks like it pulled some of the stuff off the top end. I don't know about the bottom. But we're moving again, so I guess it fixed itself. This one's going to be hard to get behind because it's got a spinner on the back. Like a massive spinner down low, not the two factory spinners. So, we got to watch out for flying cobs. Transmission and the fan are very easy access here on the side. Uh, you guys got hit by a cob. That aftermarket spinner sends them every direction, even forward. That one middle row must be a, must be a monkey this morning. Because I've never seen, and my cornhead experience is limited to John Deere and New Holland. Both of those have rollers that are supposed to mesh to pull the stock through. Eventually here we'll see uh, the grain truck run a quick load this morning. And the combine driver then has to go to work. It is very dangerous filming because of the corn stubble. Okay, everybody close your eyes. I'm turning away, putting on my hood, but we'll watch the spinners. safely at a distance. I didn't get hit by any cobs, but it's like flying shrapnel uh, when a bomb goes off. The only thing I'm envious of is he had the spinner system on the back. Not the lower one, but the upper one that I wish my New Holland had. 
Um, size wise, uh, it's about the same. Where it's eight, you got an eight three Cummins. Uh, that's a few more. That's a few more cubic inches. That's what a eight three is like five oh four. Starting to get too close. Just got a chunk of cob to the forehead. Now we missed it earlier. We saw some deer just walk across the field over there. And they were watching us, seeing if we were leaving any deer snacks. Catch them coming out on the end here. Just to see what it looks like when the beast emerges. It looks like we need to get out of the way. That's what it looks like. Six row planter and a 
conveniently Nick has a six row head to match, 30 inch rows. It's a John Deere planter, I think it was a 7,000. And uh, this is the field of corn. It's mostly flat, there's a couple low spots near the edges by the trees. And that's probably why there's trees growing over yonder. It starts to slope down and go towards the creek. Nick wants me to show off the moisture effects. Uh, that apparently it's not very, or was it very dry through here all summer. Which based on the shine on the mud, uh, that's a wetter spot, that's definitely for sure. And even for the month of November, it was a less wet, but we had rain 19 days in October. And, well, once we get that much water at that time, we're going to be a mud hole until May 1st. If we're lucky, and that's assuming it doesn't rain much in April. Or March, or February, or January, or December, but that's a lie. It's Southern Ohio, it always rains. Oh, that's, there's some smut right there, that's odd. Usually I only see that in sweet corn. By this time of year, in the field corn, it's disintegrated so much, you really can't tell it was ever there. Uh, smut's a fungus that, uh, well, it starts in wheat and it'll spread to corn, but you don't see it in the wheat. It's more noticeable in corn um, because, uh, well, the corn's a bigger plant, so it can really, like, make a large, uh, we'll say, uh, body of the fungus. It's, I'm trying... To, not to use mushroom terms because that's most of my frame of reference for funguses is that what you see is the fruiting body which produces uh, kind of the spores uh, is kind of like the uh, the top of a mushroom uh, but smut doesn't form quite like that Okay, I need hip waders. Well, we're coming in for the dump, and I have picked a spot that's maybe not so optimal for dumping, but I've already got out of the field from this position before. Because if we look behind it, it is not very optimal for any road vehicle. I don't know if we'll be able to pull this is the third dump. We've just been going down and back. Trying not to get too heavy so we don't sink in too deep. Yesterday's load was fairly full for the morning run, and I don't know if we'll be quite as full for this go around. Uh, sometimes I think that Cummins is louder than Nick. Oh, we 
got to stop and wash eggs real quick before we uh, run that to the elevator. Egg pickup is uh, in about an hour and I need every egg possible for it. So kind of doing it a wee bit last minute. So every egg that the chickens can squeeze out will be going out the door. Hmm. That one needs a rerun. Every once in a while there's an egg that the uh, chickens must have done something to get dirty and it doesn't always come clean. That's a tiny one, we'll eat that. There's no sorting or grading. They're fresh free range eggs, fresh out of a hen. Only hours old sometimes. Couldn't have a much fresher without having chickens uh, out back themselves. Uh, another tray. We're definitely testing those out. I guess we'll turn right here and at least go to where there's stop signs on the back streets of town to where I know that I will have to stop instead of guessing whether I might eventually if the light changes. And once we're in town, we can just kind of go through the low gears to get here. Stop here. We know everybody's stopping. You don't see anybody having professional grain truck races. Probably because they wouldn't be very fast or overly exciting. Chevy drive fast, drive fast. This is where I want to turn. Well, we are here, and we'll see this all again in a few minutes. I hear like 
the elevator running. I hear grain falling down. I don't necessarily hear the big fans. I don't know if their dryer setup is very obvious here either. go up the tiny hill to dump in the pit. Try not to play chicken with the forklift. Let's see, yeah, we just went in, got tested on moisture. Now we're going to dump in this pit today. straight through town and uh, come in on say the more main road there but it's nice to avoid traffic we'll get weighed again and then we'll uh, see the results we weren't any too over full on this load I don't even think we'll break uh, we like to throw 250 bush on this load just uh all we had time for this morning. Okay, we're stopping here real quick. This is that combine I was talking about. The corn was 26%, test weight was like 47. Um, uh, 300, man, it's a cute little guy. Problem is, probably really only good for uh, a demo, derby. Two row wide head, we like that. I didn't see uh, any auction listings about this, just that post on Facebook last night. I didn't realize it was local, because it was in a old combines group. Man doesn't even have rice tires on it. That'd be nice, though. Got some cast iron in the back. 
And I wonder what, somebody probably like back it into a telephone hole pretty solidly it looks like. Didn't quite get into the straw walkers too bad, but enough. Hmm. Poor old combine. Well, everybody wants to restore and save tractors, but unfortunately I, I guarantee this one go to the scrapper. So at least we'll have it, uh, its place in history here in this little video walking around it.